she wants us, she's gonna get us. She's never gonna stop. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 instant karma moments in horror movies. Dawn didn't ask you to come here, you came for the same reason that I did because you didn't know what else to do. Now get away from that door this instant! But damn it! For this list, we're looking at the most satisfying times characters in scary movies got their comeuppance exactly when they deserved it, even if the punishment doesn't necessarily fit the crime. Along the way, expect a few spoilers. Which of these films doled out the best karmic justice? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Pop Goes the Xenomorph – Alien Resurrection After three movies of extraterrestrial terror, you'd think humanity would have learned that the xenomorphs are better off dead. Ripley certainly thought so, but the conniving Dr. Wren decides to nullify her sacrifice by making a clone of her and the Alien Queen. Then, when his research not so surprisingly puts everyone in peril, Ren has the gall to betray everyone again in the name of science. Fine. Then I kill her, and you kill me, and we all die, and nobody goes home! Since he played a significant role in reviving the xenomorph threat, it's particularly poetic that he meets his end through an up-close and personal look at a chest burster. Given that he put the entire galaxy at risk, he should consider this quick death a real mercy. Number 19. Smash, Crackle, and Pop – Final Destination 2 If Claire's right about the order, then uh, Nora and Tim are, are going to be attacked by pigeons. I'm not following you. Look, they're next on death's list. If we don't find them, they're going to die. After avoiding a fatal car crash, Tim decides to spend his new lease on life being your typical careless teenager. While leaving the dentist's office and still under the influence of some laughing gas, he dumbfoundedly decides to run through a flock of birds. What did he say about your tooth? Did he say I he's like a can't remember. Ah! The, what? the act ends up putting him right in the way of a falling window pane. Let's just say he ends up a rather messy pancake, and that is putting it lightly. <laughs> Sure, he was marked for death no matter what, but he didn't exactly help his own cause. Number 18. Tiger Food – Army of the Dead If Martin's fate is any indication, revenge is a dish best served as… well, a dish. After leaving his entire team of operatives for dead, it's only fitting that he ends up with an even worse fate. Martin, let us out of here. Oh my god, I got you twice. Martin's getaway attempt only puts him face to face with a very hungry zombified tiger. Without getting into the bloody details, let's just say the film definitely earns its R rating during this scene. It's not quick, it's not pretty, and based on Martin's screams, it's not painless either. But since he's the one who put himself in this situation, it's hard to feel too bad for him. Number 17. Not so urban legend. Trick or treat. Whether they like it or not, these teens were held to the golden rule, or at least an excessive version of it. They weren't content taunting Rhonda with an urban legend about killer kids, they went all the way to make her experience it. Rhonda! Rhonda, calm down. It was all just a trick. Look, none of this is real. It was just a trick. A bad joke. I'd say it was a pretty good one. But irony was apparently on the agenda for the night, since the pranksters soon found themselves on the other end of the hunting knife. Except their assailants aren't in costumes. They're the real deal. Rhonda, open the gate! Let us in, please! It is no treat. And it's no trick. It is just a bloodbath soaked in satire. That's why, as a general rule of thumb, messing with undead children is usually frowned upon. <laughs> the carnage even makes their principal's death by werewolf look tame, which is really saying something. Number 16. A Killer Role – Scream 3 Angelina may not technically be the final girl, but she does play one in the in-universe Stab 3. Sorry, sorry! <laughs> Jennifer Gale, look, I found a secret passage! Oh, Roman's dead. What? Unfortunately, her role ends up on the cutting room floor. She's definitely no Sydney, and proves as much when she admits to sleeping with the producer to get the part. To get a leading role just to die here! Then somehow Angelina thinks it's everyone else's fault that she's now in a mansion with a bloodthirsty killer. 
When she goes off on her own, she ends up running right into the arms of a certain masked assailant. You guys should get out too! It's crazy to still be here! Evidently, Ghostface is quite the strict director. Once he cut, Angelina never got a second take. Number 15, Spa Day, Final Destination 5. Uh, yo, Buddha. Slow down on the rice cakes. When a bridge collapse nearly wipes out his entire department, Isaac decides to mourn his colleagues by rifling through their belongings. Except the spa coupon he finds isn't for a massage, it's for acupuncture. Wait, 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 wait. are those things even sterilized? No, 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 I'm not catching any diseases unless I've earned them. Once he's all poked up, a wobbly table and gravity turn him into a very unhappy shish kebab. The worst part, though, is that the needles aren't even what kill him. Although, given the pain, he probably wishes they had. Instead, Isaac spends his final moments desperately crawling to safety, only for his old friend Gravity to flatten his head via a falling Buddha statue. If that's not divine retribution, we don't know what is. You're saying it's a freak accident. Yeah, raise your hand if you believe that. Who dies during a massage? Seriously. Number 14, Human Sushi, Piranha 3D. Nothing sinks empathy quicker than a stereotypical horror movie jock's will to live. Kelly! Baby! Uh, what happened to, you know, hanging with us today? Is that your boyfriend or something? No, 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 he's just some guy from school. Someone who said he has backstage passes when he actually doesn't. Have a good day, Todd! Come on, Kelly! Todd seemingly has no qualms motorboating through a soup of human remains as long as he gets to safety. But because of his lack of humanity, it's not the piranhas that end up sealing his fate. When a girl's hair gets stuck in the propeller, the frenzied swimmers end up capsizing the boat. No one gets to live, least of all Todd. The piranhas gobble him up faster than fish food. But the blood of everyone else is partially on his hands, or at least what's left of them. Number 13, Runaway Train, Train to Busan. The only things scarier than the zombies are these selfish passengers. They outright refuse to help Suk Woo and the others, even though their group includes women, children, and the elderly. When Suk Woo breaks into the front train car, the passengers sheltered there quarantine him and the others in a completely different car. But by locking the door so tightly, the rude train goers are left with nowhere to go when one of their own decides they're better off dead. And honestly, it's hard to blame her. <laughs> As bad as it sounds, there is some sweet vindication in watching those who denied Suk Woo help now begging for it themselves. Number 12, A Midsummer's Nightmare, Midsommar. Uh, well, I'm, I'm doing my uh, research on European Midsummer traditions. These guys are just tagging along. Mr. Pell's invited us to an authentic hippie midsummer at his yodeling farm. You'd think that a person studying cultural festivals would, above all else, respect the boundaries of what they're researching. Not Josh, though. He's expressly told on multiple occasions that he can't take photos of the commune's sacred texts. Can I take a photograph? What? Uh, mm -hmm. photograph. No, absolutely not. Okay, sorry. So naturally, he waits until it's nighttime and then does just that. The cult doesn't take his infringement well, and before Josh can even admire his work, they confiscate both his camera and his life. While their methods are certainly cruel and unusual, it's a tad vindicating to see Josh almost immediately face the consequences of his actions. After all, in this case, curiosity totally killed the cameraman. Number 11, Mother Knows Best, Barbarian. From his very first scene, it's clear that A.J. Gilbride is not a very good guy. Then, after Mother nearly bludgeons his head off, hopes are high he's seen the error of his ways. But in what could have been his true moment of redemption, he tosses Tess off a water tower just to save himself. Oh my god. Oh my god, are you okay? I'm so sorry. I had no choice, you know? She was gonna kill us both, and... I had no time to think. After such a despicable act, it's hard not to cheer as Mother finally gets her claws in him. She starts with the eyes, but rest assured, there's not much left of AJ at all by the time she's finished. I'm, I'm saving you. You're okay. <laughs> all his last minute charade did was prove that Tess really is Mother's favorite. Number 10, Brandon plays with dolls, Megan. 
They say boys will be boys, but the antagonistic Brandon takes it a couple of steps too far. Unfortunately for him, his latest victim Katie has a certain toy backing her up. In fact, Megan says it best herself. You need to learn some manners, Brandon. <laughs> so, she gives him a real earful of knowledge. So much so that his entire ear comes clean off. This is the part where you run. And that's just the start of his problems, since the sentient toy then chases him through the woods and right into oncoming traffic. Following that spectacle, Megan's message is loud and clear. It's safe to say no one will be picking on Katie anytime soon. Number 9. And Then There Were None – Cabin Fever If this were a different kind of film, Jeff's survivability would almost be impressive. When the bodies start rising, he pieces out with a couple of beers and isn't seen again until the end of the film. Jeff! Stop! Stop! I don't want to get sick! I don't want any of us getting sick! By then, most of his friends are six feet deep. Or wish they were. So, naturally, he celebrates his own survival by dancing on their graves. Oh my god. <laughs> His glee doesn't last long, though. Jeff soon becomes intimately acquainted with a policeman's bullets, fired by local cops under strict orders to shoot any who are infected. It seems that hiding out didn't buy him that much more time after all. You got rid of that other one, right? Another one in the basement. Number 8. Dawn of David's End – Shaun of the Dead Rule number one to surviving a horror movie is to never, ever open the door. Rule number two is to make sure you're locked inside with smart, self-preserving people. Somehow, David in Shaun of the Dead breaks both of those in one fell swoop. Now, I can see what David is trying to say. Thank you, Lizzie. Even if he is being a twat. He's irritable, petty, and worst of all, boneheadedly decides to start dismantling their barricade. Then, even after he's told to get away from the windows, he stubbornly refuses to move. Right. I'm leaving. What? I'm not staying here. Suddenly, surprise, surprise, the zombies break the glass and end up devouring him for dinner. It is a brutal end for sure, but honestly, David had this coming for so many reasons. Number 7. Ride or Die – The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 On their way to a college football game, friends Buzz and Rick keep themselves entertained by causing all sorts of havoc on the Texas highway. That is, until they make an enemy of the wrong pickup truck. What the hell is that? From there, Leatherface puts an end to their hijinks by giving their car a new sunroof. But much to their surprise, he keeps sawing until both Buzz and Rick get some very close haircuts. Except it doesn't stop there either. And by the time Leatherface is done, Buzz doesn't have a head left at all. With this bloody detour, odds are they didn't quite make the game in time for kickoff. Number 6. Deathstroke – Let Me In You stay underwater for… three minutes. If you can do it, I'll just give you a little nick. With Owen moments away from getting drowned by his tormentors, the water was just right for some good old-fashioned payback. But Owen didn't have to hold his breath very long before Abby doled out the bloody retribution. Dude, come on. I said shut up! <laughs> we only see parts of the kids' bodies getting tossed around, but their muffled cries are horrifying enough to convince us it was plenty gruesome especially since most of it happens before Owen even comes up for air. The jerk's dismemberment sends a loud and clear message. Before picking on a kid, make sure they don't have a vampire best friend. <sighs> Number 5. Clean Up on Isle Carmody – The Mist All things considered, a supermarket is a pretty good place to hole up against monsters. The only issue is that Mrs. Carmody is there, too. The religious zealot manipulates her way into being the group's judge, jury, and executioner. Haven't I shown that I am his vessel? Later, her vile ways come to a head when she tries to sacrifice David's young son. Alas, Carmody's misguided attempts at atonement only earn her a quick death by gunshots. One to the gut, and another to the forehead.
After all the blood she spilled, seeing Carmody finally cut down is practically worth a standing ovation. The fact her followers immediately back down without her is just the sweet vindication on top. Number 4. More Bite Than Bark – Snakes on a Plane All's fair in love, war, and snakes, but even so, animals are totally off-limits. At least the furry kind. <laughs> After the slimy titular reptiles start slithering down the aisles of a plane, the despicable Paul decides to use a dog as a diversion. It isn't even his own! He just rips it out of a woman's hand and chucks it without hesitation. <laughs> The only mercy is that the Chihuahua's death was quick. So quick, in fact, that the boa constrictor still had time to catch up with Paul. Yo, would have done exactly the same thing! The snake pins him down, takes a bite out of his head, and delivers worthy justice for man's best friend. Number 3. A Marital Squabble – Saw 3 You do is no different than murder. You torture people. You watch them die. But now you're begging me not to kill this worthless bitch on the grounds of some game? Jigsaw has a penchant for terrifying games of morality, but it's still a shock to see his own protege put to the test in this twist ending. Amanda denies her master's philosophies by shooting Lynn, but she fails to realize that the doctor's husband Jeff is right behind her. Before Amanda can even apologize, Jeff ensures she meets the exact same fate as his wife. You just murdered Jeff's wife. <sighs> Apparently, bullets do fly faster than words. In a way, the immediate comeuppance fits Jigsaw's warped sense of justice perfectly. Game over. Although, given everything else Amanda did, death by bullet wound might be getting off easy. Number 2. A Night to Remember – Carrie As anyone who's ever crossed her will attest, you really don't want to get on Carrie White's bad side. But apparently, Chris and Billy never got the memo. So after they cruelly ruin her prom night, Carrie proceeds to stain her dress red with more than just pig's blood. There is no way to sugarcoat it. Her psychic rampage is nothing short of a bona fide bloodbath. All those kids did was laugh. Justifiably, the real culprits suffer a much more explosive fate. And that's no hyperbole. In the end, only one thing is for certain. No one's gonna forget this prom night anytime soon. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. No Space for Greed – Aliens there's something deeply poetic about the fact that Carter Burke died by the same creatures he tried to profit off of. This is so nuts. I mean, listen, listen to what you're saying. It's paranoid delusion. Despite the constant warnings, he refused to allow the extermination of the aliens. Naturally, it leads to a full-on attack by the xenomorphs. Not that Burke shows any remorse for it, though. The final straw comes when he locks the others in the operations center presumably signing their death warrant in order to fatten his wallet. But in a moment that's worth a round of applause, he then finds himself face to face with the very xenomorphs he let live. Back. The death isn't pretty, but it sure is a joy to behold. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.